I'd like to thank you all for coming for church. We are being reminded that let's keep on looking at our WhatsApp platforms for any communication. Amen. Uh, I've got one request, prayer request here. Tinoda kupa kutenda kunemi mose makati basirapa na amo ya kange ya tiwira ya kushaika kwa maiguru wetu. Rudor wenyu wakati koshera uyeje neti giro yenyu. Tino kutenda ino zose sha makati itira. Sha ibatika ni sha isaoneka sha makati itira zose. Shaka itakuti mutoro ukureru kapa basa rose kupapa kutanga kushikira pa kupera kwaro. Tino tenda mfuzi nekereke yose nekutisigira kwenyu. Above all, the chitenda mari, the kutunga mira zose kutishiendeke, shewa kukumbure rei, mose, wenyu, pe karo, family. Amen. Pe karo family, we'd like to thank the entire church and the pastor for the overwhelming support rendered to them during the time of their bereavement from the karo family. Amen. Shall we pray? Tina mate. Shote njeso kwe sino kutenda hii. Shawe ya mimba enyu baba. Shawe ya kuzoshumi kwa ukatiri. Baba wangu mbrenda wenyu apena njumbo yake. Ulikira yenu katina yenu zedu. Mwari chino panguwa yenu kwa muri. Iwa yenu ikira yenu baba. Shumira yu kwa wana zedu. Kutishose shaitu wa shapira. Tiko wona. Abata kwenu kwenu kwenu. Nuhitina kumaru wangu. Nuhitiko yenu kutipasira. Nuhitikumbia kwenu Jesu Christu. Amen. We'd like to thank the Lord this morning. Tuda kutenda ishema ngwana na ano. For our precious brother, brother Dipo Matanga. Na amayadi nukosha, brother Dipo Matanga. Is going to minister to us this morning. Do wachatu parizira mangwana na ano. Let's pray for her and support her with our amens. Amen. Atuwa na matini kwa tigrani maamini edu. All the time when he stands is a blessing to us. Poga, poga, pa wano mira chikombo nero kwa tiri. We shall sing a song as we invite him to the podium. Chicha imba chimbori chokwa kwa utuwa yukumbiri. Kuna mwari hakuna. Kuna mwari hakuna. Hakuna mwari hakuna, hakuna Jinore makuna mwari hakuna Hukuna mwari hakuna, hukuna mwari hakuna Hakuna Jinore makuna mwari hakuna Hukuna mwari hakuna, hukuna mwari hakuna Hakuna Jinore makuna mari hakuna Hukuna mari hakuna Hukuna mari hakuna 
I hope we are all happy to be back in the house of worship. I would like to thank the Lord for this opportunity that has been granted to me. Amen. By the pastor. Amen. To stand before you. Just to share a few from the word. Amen. Let us pray. Precious loving Lord Jesus Christ, we want to thank you for bringing us back into the house of worship. Lord, we are so glad to have come. We know, Lord Jesus, there's something that takes place when we are in your house. There's something that takes place even, oh God, after the service that we'll be able to say like those men who, go, who were going to Emmaus but did not know hearts again when you spoke to us. We believe you speak to hearts, Lord. We thank you for the worship. We thank you, oh God, for the songs that have been sung. Lord, preparing us and shaping us for your service. Come now, minister grace to our hearts in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Without wasting much of our time, Amen. Request you to stand for the reading of the word. Amen. Amen. We want to read from the book of Joshua, chapter 10. Amen. Verse 12 to 14. Verse 12 to 14. Amen. If you are able to read. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies, is it's written in the book of Joshua, so the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted no, not to go down about a whole day. Zua, Rikamira, Nemwezi, Ukarambirapo, Kushkira Rudzi, Rwatsiwa Wengi Wargo, Izi Ashina Kunyor Waere, Mpukuya Jeshar, Zua, Rakarambari Mire Pagati Pedenga, Rikasakurumiza Kuwira, Nguaya Kaita, Say Zua Rose. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. And Amen. You may be seated. Amen. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of the word. Amen. I'd like to speak on a small title. Amen. From the story that we have read, we want to speak on a paradox. Amen. A paradox. Amen. We'll start off by defining and getting what a paradox is. Amen. A paradox is something that's incredible but true. Something completely out of reason. Yeah, it's, it's something that's miraculous. It's something that's unbelievable. Amen. A supportive quote from the prophet. Now according to Webster, a paradox is something that seems incredible, incredible but it's true. Therefore, a paradox then would be the same as a miracle. A paradox is when something it just couldn't be. Then it 
the knowledge of you it just couldn't be the knowledge of human mind yet it's proven true now a miracle wouldn't be the same thing sorry then a miracle would be the same thing For a miracle cannot be explained a miracle is something that happens and you cannot explain it that makes it a paradox amen i believe the lord can make a paradox also for you this morning amen in your life situations any conditions and circumstances that are surrounding you God can make a paradox. Praise the Lord. From the word, we want to pick on examples that many things show that they are paradox. Amen. This world itself that we are living in, it is a paradox. Amen. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Amen. So we realize the world was made by and framed by the word of God. There was nothing in the world but yet the word that was spoken made the world to be. Amen. Where was the material taken by God to make the world? How did he really do it? We realize all of the structure and part of the world was just God's word. So if the world was made by God's word, isn't that a paradox? Sure it is. Because there was no material. But the world, the word itself, the world. Amen. Things that do appear, as the scripture says, were made out of things which do not appear. Amen. God had to speak that world into existence. And this morning, God can speak your healing into existence. This morning, God can create that which you have needed in your life for long. He can bring it into existence and it becomes a paradox. Amen. How many are waiting and expecting a paradox this morning? God can bring a paradox. Praise the Lord. So we are living in a paradox. We are living in a paradox because this world is a paradox. Praise the Lord. So why would we be afraid to trust such an one who spoke the existence of the world. Amen. Let's also trust his word. Trust his promises. He will do the same. Amen. God's word is a paradox itself. If we take that word, it becomes a paradox in our life. Amen. Every born again child of God yourself and myself having been born again we are a paradox ourselves. Amen. The experience that each one of us received when we were born again that was a paradox. Praise the Lord. Your receiving of the Holy Ghost my receiving of the Holy Ghost is a paradox in itself. We had our old nature that we had. But when the Holy Ghost came, when the Holy Ghost filled us, our natures were put aside. And we had a new nature, the nature of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is a paradox in itself. Praise the Lord. The singer then sang and he said, I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Old things are passed away. After the Holy Spirit came, all things were passed away. I was born again. Praise the Lord. The singer sang and said, glad day when I was born again. It was a glad day when I was born again. Praise the Lord. Unless that happens, 
You cannot be a Christian. There must be a paradox for you to become a Christian. Because no one can change a spirit in a man. No one can give you a new birth outside of God alone. God alone is the one that can do it. And it's a miracle how that God can take a man's thinking. I'm quoting. And his ways and his life and everything and change it from what it was to what it can be, what he can make it. Praise the Lord. So it's the Holy Ghost that comes and changes your nature. If it was a rough nature, if it was an unkind nature, when the Holy Spirit comes, it brings that tenderness, that sweetness. Why? Because Christ now lives in you. Praise the Lord. So this morning, to one that doesn't have the Holy Spirit. You need that same Holy Spirit so that God can bring that tender nature so that God can bring down his nature into your life. And it's no longer you that lives then. But it's Christ that will be living in you. Praise the Lord. And that in itself is a paradox. Praise the Lord. You alone cannot do it. It takes him alone. Praise the Lord. Watch how he died how he was buried resurrected went back to be with the Father went back to be God and then he sent down his spirit and that spirit came into you that is a paradox in itself praise the Lord it's incredible that his life came to be your life but it is true praise the Lord so God can create another paradox in your life. Amen. If your children do not have that Holy Spirit, heaven is full. It can fill them too. Praise the Lord. So you become a new creation, creation a brand new man. And you become more than a conqueror. Praise the Lord. Coming to the scripture reading that we read, our main text from Joshua. Amen. We realize that Joshua stopped the sun. Praise the Lord. And him stopping the sun. Can you think that's incredible? Who else can have stopped the sun before Joshua? It had not been done. Praise the Lord. So that's incredible. That a man could stop the sun. And the sun could stand still. Praise the Lord. Let's look at Joshua. Joshua was a general. He was a soldier. He came up under the influence of a prophet Moses. Moses had to be taken away. And then Joshua was commanded by God to take the children of Israel to the promised land and to divide the land to them. He had been instructed as God as God was with Moses. The same God would be with him. That was good enough for Joshua. He was told to be strong and very courageous. For the Lord, his God, would be with him wherever he went. Scripture says every place that your soul, the soles of your feet would step on, it would be his. Footprints meant possession. So it means wherever they stepped and wherever they put their footprints, it all belonged to them. That was a promise. That same promise still is today. Wherever you put the, the soles of your feet on the promises of God, all that is yours. Praise the Lord. So way before this happened, Joshua came to this land. They came as spies. Himself, Caleb, and the other ten spies. Praise the Lord. And when they came to this place, the other ten spies said, we look like grasshoppers in their sight. That was a testimony that they gave to the children of Israel. But look, Joshua and Caleb, when they came far away before then, 
when he was now giving the land. They said, we are more than able to go up and take the country. We are more than able to go up and take the land. Can't you say the same today? Promises in the Bible. Say, Lord, I am more than able to take them promises, to take that land which belongs to me. Praise the Lord. Be it sickness, whatsoever it is, say, Lord, this morning, I am more than able to take it up. And God will do something for you. Praise the Lord. So when Caleb and Joshua came, they believed they could take the land from the Jordan to the sea. Watch now when Joshua comes to divide the land to the children of Israel. He feared nothing. God had told him to be courageous. And sure he stood as a courageous man. So let me say, God is able to keep his promises. No matter how long it takes, the promises that have been written in the Bible, they will sure come to pass. Paradoxes will stand and happen in your life. Praise the Lord. And now, the stopping of the sun let's hear what the prophet says. One day in the heat of the battle, when the kings had made a great covenant among themselves and had come down against Joshua and the children of Israel that God had promised them the land and had rooted the enemy and they were in the woods and hills scattered out through the wilderness there and Joshua looked and he seen the sun going down can you see Joshua was looking and he saw that time was no longer on his side the sun was already going down he knew if those armies got a chance to replace themselves and come back again at him why? He know what he would have twice as hard a time and would probably lose more than more men. Praise the Lord. If they ever got a place to unite themselves together, can't you get to that spot in time that you realize the devil is getting some mileage and yet you are losing, you are losing time? You can stop the son of your situation this morning and you say, Lord, I want to stop. To the sun to stand still. Sickness stand still. I want to overcome. Whatsoever problem it is, stand still until I see my enemies defeated. Praise the Lord. Be like Joshua. He realized time was no longer on his side. He did not need a day more. He did not need a month more. He needed that very same day to defeat the enemy. You need the same day to defeat the enemy. You need the same day to overcome in your life. And you will surely overcome. But you know what happened? Joshua wasn't that type of a man. He needed time. The sun was going down. And you know if the enemy was ever built up, the revival was almost at the end of the close of it. Like we stand today. He knew he ever waited till the enemy got fortified against him. Don't wait until your enemy is fortified against you. Say, Lord, I can make it. That's why I'm here this morning. I want a paradox. Praise the Lord. It would be hard to win that battle. You know what he did? He know that God promised that land. Say, Lord, I know you promised my healing. Say, Lord, you gave a promise in your word. Praise the Lord. He needed more time. So the sun was about to go down. Then he said, sun stand still. Amen. A paradox indeed. And the sun stood there for a full day and never moved. And the moon over Ajalon never moved also. So the sun stopped held its place for a whole day. Can you think that's unreasonable? That's never thought of. But it is the truth. And do you know that truth always is so strange? Praise the Lord. It is strange that the sun could stand. But say, Lord, if Joshua's son could stand, my son also can stand He will do it for you. Praise the Lord. That moon and sun stood still until Joshua fought his way through. 
He avenged all his enemies. Why? Nay. It was in his line of duty. Joshua knew that I was in my line of duty. And whatsoever I need from him, because I'm standing on my post in position, he will do something. Praise the Lord. So, if you are in your line of duty, when God has commanded you to do something, like you said to Moses, why cry to me? He said to Moses, speak to the children. Praise the Lord. So if you are in your line of duty, do not fear the enemy. Stand there and know that God sent me. God commanded me to do so. Let that sun stand and you will proceed. It is always when you are in your line of duty that when you do something unshaken, not as a coward God will be there to support you it is his word praise the Lord so people today are crying all the time Lord what next what next just speak and go forward that's right God has commissioned us to do something let's do it don't stand around and think about it say what what how can it happen well this is that if God said do it. Do it anyhow. He's still the God of miracles. This morning, he's still the God of miracles. If he told you to do something, do it. Don't be a coward. There's going to be a paradox as long as you're in your line of duty. Praise the Lord. You can stop the son of your situation, friend. You can stop the son of your problem. You can stop the son of your condition so that you can fight through to victory. Praise the Lord. The singer sang it. He said, victory is mine. He said, I told Satan, get thee behind me. For victory today is mine. Can you testify the same? If victory is yours, tell that dirty devil that victory today is mine. And it is certain. Praise the Lord. It will be a paradox indeed. Do not fear my brother. Do not fear my sister. Take God at his word. And the paradox will take place in your life. Praise the Lord. And look at Noah. There was a paradox in Noah's time. In a time that rain was not expected. In a time that the skies had no rains. In a time that science proved that there would be no rain. In a time that science proved there was no rain before. But there was rain in the time of Noah. Noah, just an ordinary man. A prophet of the Lord. Perhaps maybe farming. God told him to prepare for rain to come from heaven. And yet there was no rain. Imagine how difficult it might have been for Noah. To tell the people that there would be rain. Yet scientifically there was no rain. Praise the Lord. But Noah stood in his line of duty. He knew that God said so. And so it had to be. Praise the Lord. If God said you are healed, it has to be. If God promised that he was wounded for transgressions, if he promised that he, 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 you are healed, then you are healed. Praise the Lord. Why fear? Stand with the promise. Stand with that word. He will stand with you also. Praise the Lord. Noah said, God said so. And at last, God, God brought rain. Praise the Lord. When there was no way to rain, and imagine, when there was no rain, God added to Noah, make an ark. Praise the Lord. Preach the word that rain is coming. On top of that, make an ark. Praise the Lord. How people of his day may think that Noah was so crazy. Scientifically, there is no rain. But he's making an ark. 
which needs to be in a river, a dam somewhere. Yet there was no dam. There was no river. Can you imagine? Noah made that ark. Preached the gospel. Get into the ark. Get into the ark. 120 years. And people always came with the scientific news. It's becoming further and further impossible, Noah, for there to be rain. Aren't you crazy? Why are you making this ark? Go and make Go and be farming there. But Noah said, As Noah Kati, God said so. There's going to be rain. Praise the Lord. And Noah stood by that. Rain came. That was a paradox. Praise the Lord. It being a paradox. Them scientists of the day and the people that did not want to get into the ark, they drowned because of that rain. They drowned because of the floods that came because of Noah's message. Praise the Lord. That was a paradox. Praise the Lord. Noah and his, and his household were saved. Praise the Lord. And God brought the, the rain down. My, my. It was a paradox. God can make a paradox in your life. No matter what people say, stand by the promise. Say, God said so, and it shall be. Praise the Lord. The doctors may say something. We respect them. They are brought of the Lord. And the prophet says, there is a place for those good old doctors. They may give you an x-ray. They may give you an x-ray. And the x-ray says something that will cut your life short. They may say the symptoms around you. There is death close by. But do not worry. Tell them doctors. God promised me my healing. God said so. And it shall be so. There will be a paradox. Last week we told we told talked about this uh, old man and his, and his wife. wife. A son had black diphtheria. And, and the nurse was against this man. When, when this man persisted for the prophet to come and pray for the son. And after the prophet prayed, still the condition was worse. Still the circumstances were worse. Still the symptoms, as the doctor said, were worse. But the father looked to the mother and he said, Honey, it's now better. It's now all right. After the prophet's prayer. And then the next came. He says, what are you doing? Look at the situation. Look at the condition. This boy is dying. What are you doing? And the old man got a hold of that nurse. And he said, nurse, he said, honey, we are not looking at what you are looking at. at we are looking at a cardiogram. We are not cardiogram. looking at that. At we are looking at beyond that. We are, we are looking, looking to God. It has been said. We, said. we believe it. And that settles it. And then at the end, no, the, the prophet says, prophet that young man was now a missionary in Africa. 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 It was a paradox. The healing of that, of that boy, boy, black Dipteria disappeared. It was a paradox. That sickness that has bothered your family for long, that sickness that has bothered you for long, it depends on what you're looking at. Don't look at the symptoms. Don't look at the sickness. Don't look at what is surrounding you. Don't look at the conditions that are surrounding you. Look beyond the promise. All at your God, there will be a paradox. There will be your healing there. There will be a paradox, brother. It depends on what you are looking at this morning. What are you looking at? Look at the promises. Look at what God says. It will be a paradox. If you stand by his word, if you stand by what he said, not what the doctor said, it's going to be a paradox. Praise the Lord. Say, doctor, I believe what you say. Say, doctor, I believe what you say. But beyond what you say, there is a great physician. There is something that he told me. And that which he told me is what I believe the most. And that will bring my paradox. Praise the Lord.
God will do it this morning. It's still the same God. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, yesterday, today and forever. What he did before, he still can do it even today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So don't think there is sickness. Don't think there is sickness. It's just the devil scaring you. Because beyond that sickness, there is a great physician. And when the devil sees that great physician, he's a trembling devil. Praise the Lord. This morning, the devil is trembling because he knows you are in a better place. The devil is trembling because you are in a place of promises. You are standing on the promises of Christ the King. Then the devil is trembling this morning. Say, Satan, what is you thought you got me, but I want to tell you there is going to be a paradox because I'm standing on a true word. I'm standing on a true foundation. There is going to be a paradox. Something un unheard of. Something unreasonable. But there will be a paradox. The same paradox that happened to Noah. The same paradox will happen to you this morning. If you only believe. All things are possible. Praise the Lord. David. Not David. A young man. A little ruddy fella. There was an army of Israel. David was heading sheep. And he was sent by his father to go to the army where his brothers were. Amen. To see how the brothers were faring and to carry some food for them. And then he got there. There was an army that was in the hill. And there was a great giant there. Praise the Lord. They may be a great giant before you. They may be a great giant before you. They may be a great giant before your family. But do not worry. There is going to be a paradox. All Israel was afraid. They were afraid of this giant. He said, give me a man that I must fight with. And all Israel was afraid afraid. They became cowards. Even the king himself, even the army general of, of, of this army, he was afraid. Saul himself. Saul himself was afraid. But there comes little David heading the ship. He came here and stood. And he says, who is that uncircumcised Philistine who wants to fight the army of the living God? The brothers tried to quieten the young man. He says, man, just go and head the ship there. And he says, no. I'm kind of seeing a giant over there. What shall be done to the man that will put that giant down? David knew David, he was going to put that giant down. It was not going to be him alone. It was going to be through the power of the living God. Praise the Lord. It seemed the army of the Lord was just put in a corner. God's army had got cowardly. And was afraid of that man. And said, now you trust in a real God. You say, one of you, but give me one fellow that I want to fight with. Praise the Lord. The enemy of God had bet the church of God against the hillside. Praise the Lord. And they were afraid. They became cowards. But watch in the camp. A little bitty fellow. A little sheepskin wrapped around him. The smallest man in the whole army. And not even a soldier of the time. He was ready to fight the giant. Praise Praise the Lord. Lord. And when he was going to fight the giant, Saul gave him his sword. And he said, no. The sword is too big for me. He says, how are you going to go fight him? He says, I've got a special armory. This slingshot and these five stones will put that giant down. What a paradox it was going to be. Praise the Lord. Looks like God would have given the great marching army enough courage to fight. But 
But he didn't do that. He gave it to one individual. Praise the Lord. And remember another paradox. He didn't take that sword. Saul so tried to put it in his hand. It could not fit. The poor fellow couldn't hold it up. It was too heavy for David. He took that slingshot and five stones. He defeated the whole army of the enemy. And put them to riot. That was a paradox. How that little boy could put an army to running. Imagine a little man. Smallest in the army. Not even armed. Puts an army to running. It is. Praise the Lord. You can also put that army of the enemy to running. Even this morning. It is. Tell that dirty devil. I'll put you to running. It's going to be a paradox. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Samson. Uh, Samson. Think of him. A man that had seven locks in his head. A man that had a Nazarite vow. Not to cut his hair. Praise the Lord. For his power laid in the head. You also today have a Nazarite vow. Praise the Lord. He wasn't supposed to cut his hair. That was the secret of his power. You also have a secret of your power this morning. That Holy Spirit that you have received is the secret of your power. Watch when a lion came against you. He tore it apart. Incredible. But yet it's true. Can you imagine a man? A lion is coming. Fear, fearlessly stands to meet it. Holds its mouth and the jaws. Tears it apart. My God, that's incredible. Yet it's true. How did he do it? It was when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Praise the Lord. The lion was there. The enemy was there. But when the spirit of the Lord came upon him, he was more than the lion. And when the spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you are more than a match to the enemy. Say, Lord, keep me under the influence of your Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So it was when the, the, the spirit of the Lord came upon him first. The spirit of the Lord is what caused the paradox. Praise the Lord. That's what causes the paradox. The prophet says, that's what a paradox like that would set this arena afire. If a paradox like that would come here this morning. It would set the arena afire with the glory of God. If the love of the Lord could be permitted to, be, to come upon the people, then they would pray. A paradox indeed would happen. Secondly, that same man, Samson, He killed a thousand Philistines. Imagine, with a jawbone. Praise the Lord. A jawbone. Incredible. But yet it is true. And this jawbone, I think, it must have not been a fresh one. It had just been picked from the woods. Imagine. You picking a jawbone. And Killing the enemy. Not one enemy. But one thousand of your enemies. A paradox. It was a paradox when he took the jawbone of that mule. And beat it in a thousand Philistines' heads. When them big helmets and big coats of mail. On brass weighing probably a hundred pounds. Or close to it. Big shields. And so forth, spears, well-trained men, and a helmet about an inch, and a half-thick, out of brass. Imagine, come down and turn up, and just their faces. 
And Samson stood there with this jawbone of the mule. Been laying out there maybe for 40, 50 years. Imagine. On the desert dry. Well, one lick against a piece of steel. Like that would have shattered it into a million pieces. Imagine. And he stood there. That's the only thing. He was commissioned to fight and to take that country out. He was raised up and born to slay that nation. Hallelujah. Notice God will perform a paradox when you stand on your line of duty. Noah stood on his line of duty. Them that we've read stood in their line of duty. David stood on his line of duty. Samson stood on his line of duty. And when you stand on your line of duty, Joshua did the same. God will perform a paradox. Praise the Lord. He knew what he was born for. He knew where he stood. You should know where you stand. You should know what you were born for. The thing he had in his hand made no difference. He stood there. And as those Philistines, Philistines come, and that powerful leak, of that little shrimp standing up on a rock, to reach the top of their heads. When they ran up there, you'd knock one way and one the other and they laid a thousand of them laying dead there. It was a paradox how that mule's jaw had held together. The bone continue to stand after killing a thousand. Praise the Lord. It does not matter what you use. It will stand after even using it. The same happened to Moses. Praise the Lord. Imagine taking up and taking over the army of Egypt with a mere dry stick. Praise the Lord. God can do the same this morning. Praise the Lord. I believe my time is running out. Praise the Lord. Amen. So when you stand in your line of duty, God will do something for you. God will stand by him if you don't be a coward. God will stand by you. Imagine the virgin birth of Mary. How it was a paradox. Praise the Lord. Amen. Without knowing a man, Overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. Imagine the Holy Spirit overshadowing a virgin. And there came the Lord Jesus Christ. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. My, my, my. I think my time is running out. Many pages were there that we could go through. I think we can just skip them. Praise the Lord. Let's come to this now. Amen. The prophet's conversion himself, it was a paradox. How out in the family where he came from, there were drunkards. There were people that fought. People that never knew the Lord. But right from his birth, a pillar of fire was seen right in that low cabin. And through and through, through and through in his life, he was led of God. What a paradox it was. Praise the Lord. I want to read a story here that shows a paradox. Praise God. There was a druggist at one time. Maybe a pharmacist would say, yes, some time ago, a minister friend, I just heard this told. I believe it. One whole afternoon, down in Georgia, he was visiting with this a druggist the old druggist was a fine old Christian brother yeah. full of the spirit of God and he said come in and sit down and let's have a cock they were sitting there drinking that cock he said I want to say something to you 
And you perhaps will not believe this. Well, let's hear it first. Say the minister. He said, I've always tried to do my best for God. He was a deacon in church. He said, I've always tried to live my calling to my calling and do that which was right. He said, I've never cheated anybody. I've always testified for my Lord everywhere I could. And said, after my drugs here, said, I've tried to carry the very highest class that could be bought. I've never overcharged anybody. I've tried to do everything was right. That I know how to do to serve the Lord. He said, I'm going to tell you what happened. Praise the Lord. He said, my son who is studying to be a druggist too, to follow me, he was in front of the building Day one day, and said I was during. It was during time of depression. Said a little lady walked into the door. Said you could see what her trouble was. Amen. This lady was expecting to have a child. Amen. And the husband and both of them poorly dressed. Said they give the prescription over to my son and said to have it filled. For the woman was in need of this certain thing that the doctor had prescribed for her. And said, he said, this will be so much such and such. When the to be father asked how much it will be. So and so he said, say, I will not be able to get the prescription for fulfilled or fulfilled. The son said, because that I have any money. So the, the, the man here with his wife was expecting a man and said they would not be able to have the prescription filled because they didn't have money. And said he listened to his son. So the father was listening to the young man who was talking to these clients. And, and, and this young man said to the clients, we cannot assist you. You go somewhere where you can be helped. Amen. And then, where, where, when you be helped there, you can come back. And then we will assist you. In other words, they could not help these people for free. Said the son. You are, you are standing by the rules of their company. But when the father heard this from the son, he called back this couple. And he wanted to help them. Because the wife was in a bad shape. She was expecting. Let's see what happens. The father now says, so said, I just started to lay the medicine in her hand. And when I did, I looked at the hand. It was scarred. It was scarred. He said, I looked up and he realized that he was putting the medicine in Jesus' hand. He said, I learned then that the scriptures, what it meant. In so much as you have done and to the list of these, my little ones, praise the Lord. So when the father was putting the medicine in the hands of this lady, these hands were scarred. He realized it was not the hands of a man, but they were the hands of Jesus. My, imagine my brother. He sees the scarred hands. Praise the Lord. What a paradox it was. So imagine if the son had not helped him. He would have not helped Jesus himself. Maybe let's go to another example. As we close. It would bring us more light. There was a man, St. Martin. He was a soldier. And one night, coming down a cold, dark street. And there was, in this cold, dark street, laid an old bum. Imagine an old bum laying in the street, freezing. His blood was freezing in his veins. And Martin, yet not a Christian. And anyone who has read Bible history knows of St. Martin. The historian the other day that was trying to get his card. 
That's the one I picked for the third church age, St. Martin. Because he had signs following. And St. Martin looked down before he was a soldier. And they laid this old man, this old bum, laying in the street, freezing. And he looked as the musicians come to the platform. And he looked and he had one coat. Himself, Martin was wearing one coat. Yet Yet this bum was freezing. Without the coat, he would freeze. So, St. Martin took his knife and cut his coat in half and wrapped the bum up in it. Put the other half around himself and went walking on. Imagine. What a paradox. This man tears his, his, his jacket in half, weighs half of it, and the other half, he leaves it with a bum. That night, when he got into his room, St. Martin, and he had sat down, he had someone come into the room. He looked. Here come Jesus. Wrapped in that piece of coat. That was his call to the ministry. So he thought he had put a garment, the half garment to a bum. But that was not a bum. When he was right in his home, he saw Jesus wearing that half jacket. What a paradox. My. We may, let's bow our heads. He's still the same God. He's still the same God of paradoxes. He still can do it for you. If he did it for them. If he did it for St. Martin. Who teared his jacket apart. Gave it to a bum. And just thought I've given to an ordinary bum. Late in the night. While in his home. He saw a man coming in. Wearing that half jacket. What a paradox. In your condition and situation. God can create a paradox. God can make a paradox. If you only stay by his word. There will be a paradox. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all my fear is gone. Because I know, yes, I know. My future, oh, in life is swift, in division, because he lives, oh, because he lives, oh, I can face to put, I can face to more, because he lives, because he
He never changes. He is still the same God of paradoxes. The same God who used a jawbone. Hallelujah. Who made Samson to use a jawbone. Which was 40 to 50 years old. My brother, it destroyed an army of a thousand men. It doesn't matter how your situation is taken. It doesn't matter how long it has taken. He is still the same God of paradox. Because he lives, you can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. Brother Bram said that Job was laying there for about 40 to 50 years. And when he was, when Samson was hitting those Philistines, they had iron helmets. But brother, that did deter the God of paradoxes. He can do the same to your situation. Brother, Joshua made the sun to stand still. Joshua And we understand that it's not the sun which moves. But it's the earth which rotates upon its axis. So to Joshua, it was not his homework how the sun is going to stop. What it took for the sun to stop was God's homework. All Joshua needed to do was to believe in the God of paradoxes. Hallelujah. Noah preached of a rain which never had rained. Hallelujah. But Abraham said, even those days, the scientists would shoot.